For this video, we're going to add a default insert site selection dialog to the work execution application. Before that, though, on the insert work order page, we're going to add the site ID and org ID fields. We'll navigate there just like we would through the work execution application. Once there in the data explorer, we'll drag the site ID into a spot on the screen and drop it. Similarly, we'll find the org ID and, dr and find a place for that field and drop it on the screen as well. In this case, we'll drop it into the same group item as the site ID. From there, we're going to edit this group item and turn it into a layout by opening the menu and choosing Convert to Layout. Now we're going to edit that layout to put the fields next to each other. I'll open the Edit Layout dialog and manipulate the layout so that the site ID and the org ID fields are next to each other. I'll also set the number of rows equal to 1, tab out of there, and press OK. Now that the fields are next to each other, I'm going to add a lookup to the site ID field. This is just so users can select their site ID when they're on the new work order page in the work execution application. This wizard will walk us through the steps to do that. In this case, we're going to choose an MBO to select records from the site MBO. Next, we'll choose that MBO set from the application, selecting site ID and org ID. Now we're going to choose to use an existing resource. This way we don't have to reach back into Maximo and create a brand new OSLC resource. Since there's already one in the work execution application, we'll press next. Now from here we can choose a layout for these fields to be applied to. You can choose any of them that exist already in the system. I'm just clicking up and down to kind of view a preview of what those layouts look like. From there I'll select one and press next. Then I'll choose what fields go in each spot on the layout. Then I'll press next and I'll confirm that my return attribute is site ID and hit OK. Once that's finished, the dialog will open showing all the information about this lookup. In this case, we also want to set the org ID as well, so we'll, we'll add a return attribute to do that. From there, we'll save it, and when we close it and navigate back to our insert view, we can see there's our lookup view with the, both the site ID and org ID. Now we'll close that view and navigate back to the start page where we'll create a brand new view where the user will select the default insert site. We'll choose that option from the start page. In this wizard, we'll select template. Then we're going to select a list page template because we want to select uh, our items from the list. Now we'll choose the site resource. This will look a little bit similar to what we just did. We'll choose our two fields, press next. We'll choose a layout for those fields and we'll bind our fields to our layout. Next, we'll choose a query to support this view. Um, in this case, we'll use the WHERE clause to find a view that has just a one-to-one -one, uh, WHERE clause so that we can select all the records in the site table. Now we'll name the view and we'll apply a, or set a label for the view. Set default insert site. Press finish after reviewing the data and it will open the new view that we created. Now from here we're going to do a couple things. First is we're going to set this view to be searchable so that users can easily search from the list page in the view to find the records. We'll select yes when we're asked if we want to set add a header to this view. 
Now we'll set the transition to for the view. We do that simply by dragging the view that we want to go to, which is our, our normal list view, into our new list item. Now we're going to add a, a click event on here to actually set the values. You do that by right clicking and choosing to create a new click event. Once inside the view, we add our logic. Our logic in this case is really simple. We're going to set a new attribute called ODS for override default site to the selected value from our list page. We're using completion from our uh, scripting engine so that you can more easily write this. Similarly, we'll do the same thing with the organization, except call it ODO. Now we'll save that and close that script. Now, when you click a record in the list, it will set the default site and org to that record's values. Now we'll return back to our start page to add an action to open up the view to set our default site and org. In the items, we'll select Create Action. We'll give our new action a label. Set Default Insert Site. On the Supplemental tab, we'll add it to the Overflow menu, so it will appear when you click on the three dots. And we'll set the transition to to the new view we just created, so that when this action fires, it will navigate to that view. We'll press OK. Now we're going to edit the script that fires when a new work order is created. We need to edit this script because this is where the default site and org are set. So in our actions, we're going to choose edit event, uh, edit event on click and choose that action. This will navigate us directly to that out of the box action where we can modify the syntax. You can see it's in the woe detail handler. Now we'll edit the event. First we'll find where the default site and org are set and we'll add syntax so that we can change the logic so that if a user has selected a default site or org in our dialog that we'll use that instead of using the out-of-the-box user manager get info def site value. So instead we're going to, going to use our user manager ods field if it has a value and similarly we're going to use our user manager odo for our organization value if that is set as well. If that value isn't set, we'll default it to use the user's default value, which is from the labor table in Maximo. Now that we've done that, we're going to save our script. And we'll also save our application after closing our windows. and we can preview our application. When you run the preview action, it builds and opens the preview for you. We'll skip through that just to save some time and navigate directly to the browser result of our new functionality. I'll log in with Wilson. And before anything, we'll confirm our lookup field works. So we'll go to the Create Work Order application, and there they are. There's the site and organization field next to each other, and we have a lookup to allow us to set the values, and so that functionality works. Now we'll go ahead and set our default values. We'll open up our new action. We'll get a list of records. We can filter it. We'll say we'll filter for Eagle SA values. We'll choose a new site and and org. Now when we create our work order, our value is defaulted to the record we just selected. I'll cancel and open a new one 
and we'll see it's still defaulted to that value. That's it for this functionality. If you have any questions, contact us at support at trmnet.com. Thanks.